In this class we're going to look at group leadership styles and in particular we're going to focus in on the Vroom Yetin Jago method of identifying group leadership styles. Now this particular class is going to become somewhat complex as we go through it. There will be a lot of information processed in some of the slides. So it's wise that you understand the technique, understand what's happening, rather than having to perform the exercise yourself. Uh, it would be very time consuming to set this up in practice and it would be very time consuming to undertake the, the task. So it's more important that you understand the technique and understand the logic behind the technique and what it's attempting to do. So in a nutshell, what it's going to do is to try to work out the group leadership styles and it'll do this based on questions and depending on the answers to the questions those will shed insight into the type of person making the decision and we'll be able to group that person under particular styles. So what the model does first is set up different types of leadership group leadership styles and we'll then go through uh, a series of questions that will help to determine what the leadership styles actually are and it'll refer back then to the leadership styles. So we'll see how it works in practice but uh, it's important that you understand the logic that it's trying to just simply work out what uh, group leadership styles applies under certain circumstances and in our case depending on the answers to the questions that have been posed. So we'll look at the questions, look at the leadership styles and then we'll get on to look at the method. So leadership styles, group leadership styles, well there are three autocratic, consultative and collaborative. This particular method uh, has these three types of group leadership styles. Now the autocratic style, one member makes the decision and informs the others. It's autocratic. So one member is dominant, one member makes the decision and informs the others, simply tells the others what he or she has decided. The process here is called autocratic A1. A1 is just a code uh, so to keep the diagram later uncluttered. This group member uses existing knowledge to make decisions. So an A1 is autocratic but the group member uses existing knowledge to make decisions. We can contrast that with an A2. This group member seeks information from the other group members. Still autocratic. Uh, the person, the, the, this particular type of group leader seeks the opinions of the others but then decides what the appropriate course of action is and informs the others. That's why it's autocratic. Consultative will gather information from the team and then make the decision. That's what's meant by consultative. Here consultative is C1. The group as a whole is consulted regarding their opinions. However, they do not meet as a group. So they're just simply consulted. It could be an email sent to all of them asking their opinion about something or it could be very informal contacts made with them, a telephone conversation or whatever. Uh, they don't meet as a group, they're just consulted about something. It could be more serious and they could be brought together in a, in a meeting, asked to meet at a particular time and place to discuss some issue. This is consultative too. And then we have the collaborative. All the members of the group collaborate to find a solution. Uh, this is oddly enough called G2, uh, where the, the group leader in this case facilitates the discussion to find the, the solution. They're collaborating already to try and solve the problem. Um, the, the group leader facilitates the discussion to try and find the best solution. So we have three styles and different processes within each. If we just group those for a moment on this slide, we see we have autocratic, consultative and collaborative. 
and different styles or processes if you like um, sorry di different process a1 for autocratic uh, 1 autocratic 2 a2 and what it means what does a2 mean what does a1 mean and I said uh, these uh, abbreviations a1 a2 c1 c2 and so on these are used to keep the the diagram that we're going to get in not a diagram this chart we're going to get in a few moments to keep it uncluttered so it, it just if we were to write everything down it would be very cluttered indeed and very difficult to read on a video for sure so it's just a shorthand now um, the method is to determine which of these styles and processes is most appropriate is there uh, there is a, a yes and no questions uh, that may be asked and uh, these series of yes and no questions will help to determine the style so it, it's quite dichotomous it's a yes or a no so it's a question which is amenable to a yes or no answer and depending on the answer that's given will be an indication of the type of style that that person is exercising within the group and it builds a decision tree based on the responses now the questions that are going to be asked well we can identify here on this one we identify seven questions um, it really does depend on, on what is being proposed and, and the complexity of the, the situation that's been dealt with the number of questions can be tapered accordingly but here we'll just deal with seven questions and see how it works so the first question could be uh, is the technical quality of the decision very important so is the quality of the decision very important if uh, if it fails is that is that significant is it a big problem if it fails so that's our first question second does a successful outcome depend on your team's members commitment to the decision so must all the team must the team be committed to the decision if it's going to be successful uh, must there be buy-in for the solution to work in other words must the team members want to be involved must they buy into the the whole process be involved in it question three do you have sufficient information to be able to make the decision on your own again as you can see it's a yes or no answer four is the problem well structured so that you can easily understand what needs to be addressed and what defines a good solution so is the problem well structured uh, is the problem vague ambiguous difficult to understand or is it is it well structured question five are you reason are you reasonably sure that your team will accept your decision even if you make it yourself so does the person making the decision uh, have the trust of the team will the team follow that decision six are the goals of the team consistent with the goals of the organization um, so is there inconsistency between what the team wants and what the organization wants Uh, will there be li uh, likely be conflict among the team as to which solution is best so will the team fight over which solution is best obviously it depends on the type of leadership style as we said earlier if it's autocratic then the autocrat will, will simply bully the solution through presumably but here we have seven questions now let's have a few words about the method itself well uh, use the figure in the uh, the slides that are coming up to follow your answers through the decision tree and identify the best solution for the, the situation so we're we're going to look at a decision tree with these questions answer the questions yes and no and then depending on the answers we can link it back to a particular process it's an A1 or a uh, C2 or whatever it is and these will be an indicator of the type of leadership style 
that that person has within the group. So we can identify the leadership styles within the group. And also note here that some scenarios there's no need to answer all of the questions. So it depends on, on what the situation is. It, it can be varied according to circumstances. The one we've got here is just illustrative of how the method works. Now let's start. <clears throat> so let's take let's go back and take the first one, first question. Okay. Uh, is the technical quality of the decision very important? Are the consequences of failure significant? That's the first question, the one we discussed earlier. And again, as I said, it's dichotomous. It's a yes or no. Is the answer yes or no? Straightforward. So one of these must be selected. Now, second question. Does a successful outcome depend on your team's commitment to the decision? Must there be buy-in for the solution to work? Again, a yes or a no. Now, please look here at, at the question one. The answer was no, no. So look at the, the sequence no, no. And here, no, no is a near one. So it actually terminates at that point. If we uh, look at what was meant by A1, this group member uses existing knowledge to make decisions. Because the answers were no and no. Uh, is the consequence of failure significant? No. It doesn't. It's not that significant. The decision is not that significant. Um, does the success, successful outcome depend on your team members commitment to decision? No, it doesn't. So it looks like a trivial decision really. It, it looks like something that can be made individually. So the, the group, this group member uses existing knowledge to make the decision. It's a dear one. So no, no has terminated. Let's put in the next question. Do you have sufficient information to be to be able to make the decision on your own? Now this again is yes, no, yes, no. And it follows on from the yes, no on the previous question. But here we've got two terminations again. Again, both A1. This group member uses existing knowledge to make decisions. Uh, let's go down the yes, yes, yes route. Uh, is the technical quality of the decision very important? Yes, it's a very important issue. Does it depend on the commitment of the team members? Yes, it does. Do you have sufficient information to be able to make the decision on your own? Yes. In that case, it's terminated. And if you go yes, no, yes, so uh, is the technical quality of the decision very important? Yes. Does it depend on the uh, team member's commitments? No. Do you have sufficient information to be able to deal with it yourself? Yes. In which case it's terminated. Four. Is the problem well structured so you can easily understand what needs to be addressed and what defines a good solution? Well, here we have yes, no, yes, no again. And here we have a, a C2 appearing under the, uh, the line yes, no, no, no. So we go down from yes, no, 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 we get a C2. This group member seeks information from other group members. So is the problem well structured so you can easily understand and address what's uh, required? No. In that case, seek advice from the other group members. So it's a C2. Now you can see that questions 3 and 4 were not relevant in the case of the, the line no, yes, and then there was a gap. It missed out questions 3 and 4 and now has come back into play with question 5. So now we've got the sequence no, yes, 
yes. And you see two of the questions were not relevant in that case. So now let's go to question five. Are you reasonably sure that your team will accept uh, your decision even if you make it yourself? Well, yes. Let's say we go yes, 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 yes. Well, if it answers yes, this group member seeks information from other group members. So they seek information to give them confidence to make the decision. Or it could be yes, yes, no, uh, no, yes, which gives us a C2. This group is brought together as a whole and their opinions sought. Or it could be, as I said earlier, no, yes, yes, which is an A1. And we dealt with A1 earlier. Or it could be a no, yes, no, uh, in which case, are you reasonably sure that your team will accept the decision? And the answer is no. In that case, facilitate a discussion to find a solution. So it goes G2. But you can see all of these, the ones with the uh, the codes underneath, A1, C2, A2, uh, G2, these are points of termination. These are indicators of what needs to be done. Are the goals of the team consistent with the goals of the organization has set to define a successful solution? Well again it could be yes, no, yes, no and so on. Uh, will there be likely conflict amongst the team as to which solution is best? And we could have a series of responses like that. So what we've got here is a way of going through various questions and each question helps us to determine the type of um, group leader that's emerging. What style of leadership that person has got. Are they autocratic? Are they consultative? Are they collaborative? Um, do they do they widely discuss with the group or do they take individual decisions? So we're starting to work out the type of person they are, they are. And it all depends on the type of situation that they're confronted with. Is the, uh, the technical uh, quality of the decision very important? Question one. Uh, no, it's not. In which case you can see it's not a very uh, big decision. So there are only questions one, two and five need to be considered. Um, which gives us the three possibilities A1, uh, sorry two possibilities really A1, G2 and the A1 from the no no. So it just gives us an insight into the leadership styles for group leaders and it does it by knocking out certain possibilities and continuing to investigate as long as no solution is found. But once a recommendation or a solution is found that's identified and that is an indicator of the type of person uh, that it is. So look over it and uh, think about the model. It's <coughs> widely quoted in the literature. Uh, we're not going to ask anyone to devise questions and uh, develop a schema like this uh, on their own. This is more to show how it works rather than uh, get you to uh, devise your own exercise. Uh, but it is important to understand the importance of the method and it's important to uh, be able to follow it through and understand the logic of each part and how the questions enable the, the style of leadership to emerge and to be understood. But that's all we're going to deal with in this session so we're going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.